So today I'm ripping into my paramotor. Um, this is the weekend after bad apples. So at the end of that fly in, um, I went to fire up my motor for one last flight and it was smoking. So I don't know if that smoking started right then or if it started during in the middle of the flight prior to that. But uh, in any case, something's going on with it, but it's long overdue for some maintenance anyways. So the idea is just take it all down, rip it apart, see what's going on inside and then order the parts that I need. Uh, if nothing else, it'll just get a good cleaning. So yeah, so we'll see what we find. Peace. So I didn't check my compression before I started, um, but like I said, I had smoking um, when I started the motor up before. I haven't found a smoking gun yet, so I haven't taken the piston out out yet. Like I said, I don't see anything huge. There was no gouging really in the cylinder, but um, I probably should have done a compression test first. I might reassemble it and do a quick one just to see what it was at, but um, I'm guessing that's part of my problem. So we'll keep going. We'll see what we got. Peace. Okay, just did the compression test and uh, it read fine. It's reading 120. I don't know what this motor is, but 120 is good for uh, any motor. So, yeah, I don't know, man. Rings and piston appear to be good. I don't know. Um, at least I'm getting compression, so. Nothing's jumping out of me right now, but we'll keep going, see what we get. Peace. All right, so I thought I'd just show you what the inside of the carb is looking like. I didn't really expect to find anything major here, but since I'm taking apart the motor anyway, I figured take apart the carb. I have a carb rebuild kit. They're only a couple of bucks, um, so why not do it? But and you can see the inside of this carb is I mean damn near perfect it's pretty it's pretty clean I'm not finding any gunk the gaskets aren't particularly um, like worn out or they're not even really sticking to the um, to the base material here so I have all my new gaskets and all the parts here I'm just replacing what needs to be replaced all the screens are in good condition I'm not finding any buildup inside there no gunk whatsoever in the carb but I did have a bunch of like oil dripping out of it during operation, so I don't know what that is. I figured, or I thought it was the reed valve. I thought I might have some blow by past the reed valve in the um, wrong direction from the crankcase, so I'd get, be getting fuel through the reed valve into the intake, um, back into the carb, and then dripping through. Um, but the reed valve looks good too. I checked it. Unless it's got some type of porosity, I don't know what, what would be wrong with the reed valve. Um, I can't see any light through it. So, it, I don't know, it seems good to me, but uh, we'll keep going and see what we find. Peace. Oh yeah, and if any of you are watching this video as like a tutorial, I'm not showing all the steps, really, I'm just uh, showing the major points. But if you've never taken apart a carburetor before, it's not difficult to do. Um, all you have to do is go really slow. So, take pictures if you need to, take everything apart really slowly, lay everything out really nice and neat on clean paper towels or clean workbench, whatever you like to do. And then there are small parts in here and they're spring loaded, some of them. So you need to take it apart really slow. Don't blow anything out with air until you know it's completely taken apart. Even then, you still don't want to. I, I've taken apart carburetors before, thought they were fully taken apart, hit them with some compressed air and then heard a part hit the garage wall or the floor. And that's the end of that. You're not gonna find that part and you probably aren't even gonna know what part that was. So I did that on my lawnmower recently and had to buy a whole new carb. It's only 10 bucks, but still it's a pain in the ass. So um, if you've never taken apart a car before, it's not hard. It's like a little puzzle. Just take it apart slow. Um, and that's it. Peace. All right, here's what we got so far. Fully rebuilt the carburetor. Nothing crazy in there. I don't use ethanol fuel. So all the diaphragms and gaskets were in pretty decent shape. They came right off. This diaphragm here is a little bit worn out. I don't know if you can see, it's a little floppy. Um, so again, I wasn't having carburation problems, but it'll 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 still run better. And like I said, car, carb kit is pretty cheap, so why not replace it? These gaskets are from the reed valve. Like I said, the reed valve looks good, 
but I don't know. I still, I'm still gonna replace the pedals because I have it off, and I really think that it might be part of the cause of the oil getting up into the intake. Again, I don't know. I'm, I've never torn one of these motors down before, so I'm guessing, but that would that would seem a likely cause. So I'm still gonna replace those pedals, even though it looks like it's in decent shape. Um, what else? What else? What else? Yeah, anything else looks good. So another one of the symptoms I was having was um, excessive carbon buildup in the motor. So you saw that picture of the uh, inside of the uh, cylinder and the head there. That was uh, caked up pretty bad, um, full of carbon. So I got that cleaned up. Um, but if you look close in here, let's see if it'll show it. Yeah, see that little port in there? I think that's called the decompression port. I'm not sure what it's called, but when that gets clogged up, you can have a hard time starting your motor. So I noticed that recently. It used to be a one or two pull max uh, on this motor. Um, and recently I've been three, four, five, six pulls, especially when it's cold. Um, so I don't know if that's having anything to do with it, but I can see that it's, it's pretty well kicked up. Um, and I've seen online what guys do for this is just run a drill bit through it. So I'm gonna run it through with my hand first. See if I can clear it out. Uh, I'm not gonna force anything, but I'm gonna get that cleaned out as well. All right, peace. All right, <clears throat> so I just got that port cleaned out. I was able to do it with my fingers. So here's the progression of drill bits that I had to use. I went from 564, so I could barely get that in, squeezed it through, then went to 330 seconds, and then 764. So that's a pretty big progression. That's how clogged up that, that port was. Um, but after I got it done, like I said, I just used my fingers. But after I got all that carbon out of there, that 764 fits, I mean, perfectly. So you can see it's just getting in there. And uh, there's like no wiggle room, so that's the size of that hole. So that's exactly where it should be. So that thing was really plugged up. Um, so hopefully it starts a little easier. Peace. Wraps up day one, got the paramotor put back away. All I did today was tear basically everything down. So, um, got whole top end torn down, not splitting the case. There's nothing wrong with the bottom of the engine. I'm gonna get online and reorder all my gaskets. But uh, yeah, that wraps up the first day. Um, I don't know where I'm going from here. I didn't find anything wrong. I didn't see anything blatantly obvious. Um, I've got decent compression. I've got, I still got my cross hatching inside my cylinder. Uh, nothing with, was wrong with the carb that I could see. Aside from old gaskets letting things leak, um, I don't know what would cause the oil um, coming out of the carb area. So I had oil dripping out of the carb area, had oil in my um, air box, which I thought was the reed valve, and I had really excessive carbon buildup. The spark plug was just caked, caked in carbon. You saw the top of the cylinder, and uh, the top of the piston was pretty caked too. So got it mostly cleaned up. I'll probably take it to work and throw it in the parts washer or the sonic cleaner and get it real clean. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't know where I'm going from here, but uh, we'll see. Peace. All right. This has been a couple days, but all my parts came in the mail, just gaskets, the uh, reed valve pedals, and then the, uh, and I bought a little tool for the exhaust spring, the exhaust spring puller. I've been using like I don't know, whatever I had later on the garage, but this tool's like seven bucks, so it's gonna make it a lot easier, so I bought that too. Um, yeah, today should just be reassembly. Clean everything up one last time, reassemble it. Uh, I decided not to buy a new piston. Uh, the piston looked good to me, so uh, I'm gonna reassemble it and try it out. I may end up regretting that in the future, but uh, come 100 hours, which is 20, 30 hours from now, if I wanna replace it, it's you know 20 minutes worth of work to tear the engine down to the point where I gotta throw a piston at it, so no big deal. So, yep, here we go.
All right, everything's reassembled. Uh, next step is to fire it up, see how it goes. Next step is to fly it. 